but you've still oh, written a book. The book. Yeah. This is your yeah. latest book that's just come out this week, co-written with Andy Harper from Fox Sports, called Changing the Game, and it great, gives great insight into your vision and your hopes for football in this country, as well as giving a bit of background into you, your coaching mentality as well. And I was quite surprised to read, it was quite sweet, actually, that the inner coach was in you even when you were a young boy? Yeah, look, it's, it's something I've always, I guess, wanted to do. I, I didn't think I was ready to, to write an autobiography yet. Um, that's yeah, parade, uh, yeah, the high school So team. you were 12 years old here? 1978. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was, and, and the coach was the music teacher who thought it was better <laughs> to do the homework uh, um, marks rather than take training. So I, I, I sort of took charge. I don't know why. And I don't know why all my mates who are still mates from that photo were listening to me back then. And we were wearing the old footy jumpers, the sleeveless uh, Aussie rules jumpers because they didn't have, uh, you know, uh, jumpers for us. And, yeah, that's kind of where the coaching career. And, yeah, look, I, with the book, it's just... It's, it's stuff I talk about endlessly, you know, in my circles, you know, my love of the game and where it came from. And it's just great to put it down in sort of in a book and maybe give people a better understanding about my sort of philosophy and my journey um, without it being, you know, just my story. Mm. Well, one of my favourite sections was the photos because the photos that are in here are fantastic because a lot of people yeah. may not know that you did start off as a player from a very young age you continued and it was at South Melbourne where you had a lot of success you went on as well to two <laughs> premierships as a player and two premierships as a coach but that's a cracking Played photo a few Ange. times against you Ange, as well yeah with the white shoes yeah no it was, um, <laughs> you didn't yeah, have look, white uh, shoes look, then I, I kind of say it in the book uh, my playing career was a real struggle for me um, mm. I just well so yeah I played for the Socceroos a couple of times but I, I, I kind of knew inside me I was never going to reach the very top I just had I really battled with it um, I always knew coaching was my calling if I was going to do something special in the game that was where it was going to be so it was it was the playing career whilst great it was it was still a frustrating existence for me I wanted to be better than I was um, but you know it's still an important part because you know a lot of the stuff I, I kind of learn on the journey in terms of my, my philosophy you get through you know playing the game. Now, speaking about South Melbourne, you mentioned in the book of the important role that played in the community, especially with the kids. Yeah. Do you see a future for the likes of South Melbourne or the old clubs uh, in, in Australian football for them to play a role? Yeah, look, I, yeah, I, I explain in the book. I mean, it, people forget that those clubs at that time were not mm. sporting clubs or just sporting clubs. Yes. They were a social hub and a, and a, a kind of security blanket for people who'd come halfway around the world, yeah. didn't know the language, six days of the week are battling just to get simple things done and can walk through a set of gates and feel like they're at home. Mm. It was a really important part of the community at the yes. time. Mm. Um, the question of do they have a role, they, they can have the role. What they failed to do, I think, was change as the people that, that they sort of comforted in that time changed. Because mm. as the generations went on, we changed as people yeah. as well in terms of our expectations when we go to sporting game contests now, you know it, beca it had to become something more mm. and some of the clubs just stood still and re wanted to remain that. Now, of course they have a role to play mm. in the future but it's up to them also to, to understand their role now mm. and now it's more about opportunities giving to young kids yeah, in terms of different yeah, yeah. A, a, a sort of a hub to become a professional football player. We don't need that social protection that we had we needed back 30, then. 40 years ago. Yeah, now, but so therefore, it's still a very important competition, uh, whether it be in Victoria no, or whether it be in New South Wales. It's or essential. I mean, I know, you know the headlines out of the book was uh, I'm talking about expansion because the reason I talk about expansion is I just think we've got more boys and girls playing the game than ever before. Yeah. The worst thing we can do is deny them opportunities, whether that's at the top level or any level. Because what our experience is, they don't just stop playing the sport, they actually yeah. walk away from the game. That's yeah. right. Yeah. They don't even support the no. game because of that experience. So these clubs have a critical role because they can be that first step or even the final step to a professional career. And yeah. how far you have come. There was a quote in the book about after facing the Netherlands at the 2014 World Cup. And it said a lot about you as a coach. After our World Cup game, Louis van Hull, <laughs> he didn't shake my hand. I liked that because it told me that we were on the right path. Yeah, look, uh, again, and that's just me, I, I guess, with, with my kind of Aussie battler spirit <laughs> going that, you know, I just, I won't cop it anymore. You yeah. know, I, I don't need people to tell me that we, my teams play good football. I, I know that. Yeah. Uh, I don't need anyone to tell me I'm a good coach. I know that. Um, and if anything, if they're walking away and they're not happy and, and they're having a go at me, at least 
It means I've upset them a little well, bit. Okay, and I've, now, I've upset a few to be well, <laughs> You have, <laughs> and let's be honest, there's something going on with the Dutch. Now, I don't know whether it's because we had Dutch coaches before. <laughs> oh, no. And you, I know Holger wasn't Dutch, but you had a problem with Van Bommel as well. So. Yeah, look, yeah. And, and again, you know... I, you love that, though. Yeah, you I do. I, I told him to get back in his box because, you know, <laughs> at the end of the day, we were, we were dominating the game and he wasn't going to tell me how my players should behave, you know.